For a big part of my life, I had one goal. I wanted to become a faster runner. Didn't matter the event, whether it was the 800 meters, the mile, the two mile, the 5K, the 10 mile distance, the half marathon, 8K cross country, the 3000 meter steeplechase. I didn't care what the event was. I wanted to become better at it the next time I raced it. And what I wanna do in this video is talk about a four point plan for your next breakthrough. If you wanna get faster, if you wanna run races, and get PRs that are faster than ever before, this is your 16 to 20 week plan. And what we're really talking about right now is your capacity. What we are gonna do is improve your capacity for training so that then you have a higher capacity to race faster. Now look, there's no sugarcoating this approach. It's going to mean that you're gonna to have to train a lot harder than you might have in the past. But training PRs almost always have to come before race PRs. So if you wanna get faster, if you wanna improve as a runner, we first have to focus on your training. So let's get to step number one. You wanna become faster, you want your 20 week approach to setting a big new personal best. Step one is to double down on strength training because what we're gonna do over the next 16 to 20 weeks is dramatically make your training more challenging. And so to do that in a safe way, to cut your injury risk so that you're not getting hurt while boosting your training load, we've got to focus on strength training. This is gonna to toughen up not only your muscles, but all of your connective tissues, your bones, your joints, ligaments, tendons, all the things that typically get hurt when runners get injured. And in this approach that we're taking right now, step one is injury proofing the body. Now, <laughs> you'll always have an injury risk when it comes to running or really any exercise. So this isn't foolproof, but it's the most effective strategy we have. So get consistent with strength training. Let's make sure you're sandwiching all your runs in between a dynamic warmup and a post-run runner-specific strength or core routine. You don't need to get into the gym to lift weights, but that would be wonderful if you did. Get consistent and really focus on this for four weeks. All right, so now that you have doubled down on strength training, you've spent four weeks being super consistent, you haven't missed any strength training workouts, the next step is to spend about eight weeks improving and increasing your mileage and your long run. These are capacity building strategies. They're gonna improve your ability to tolerate more work. And only when you can tolerate more work will be, you'll be able to work harder and ultimately race a lot faster. So during this eight week phase, we want to be running more overall weekly mileage. It might help to get up to five, six, maybe seven days of running per week. Keep most of it very, very easy, and then focus on your long run. Let's try to add about a mile every one to two weeks. We really want to get your long run at least into the double digits. That's where a little bit of magic starts happening. That's where you start developing more endurance. If you can get up to 15 plus miles for your long run, even better. But what we're doing now is improving your ability to do more work. And once we've laid this foundation, then we can lay the icing on this cake and you'll be racing a lot faster. This video is sponsored by Inside Tracker, our newest partner for the YouTube channel, and I couldn't be more excited. They are an ethical company. They are a company that I've been using personally for years, and they're one of the most reputable blood testing companies in the country. Inside Tracker tests your blood, very simply. They look at over 40 different biomarkers from stress hormones like cortisol to testosterone levels and vitamin D, all so that you know what's going on inside your body. So you can tell if you're under training, you're over training, you're optimally training, or if you just have any other health issues that might be going on that might be impacting your running. And like I said, I've been using them for years. I've gotten numerous ultimate tests and I'm about to get my third and I added on the DNA kit. This is gonna be really special for me just to get a more in-depth look at what's going on inside me so that I know if there are any red flags that I have to address. And that part of the, the, the whole procedure is why I love Inside Tracker because you know what they do? 
They don't just give you a report showing you how your markers might be in the zone or outside the zone. They tell you how to improve them. So if you are too low or too high with any of these metrics, they give you science-backed ways to improve upon them through diet, exercise, or lifestyle changes. So I'm super happy about this partnership. And if you go to insidetracker.com slash strengthrunning, use code strengthrunning, you're gonna get 25% off any test that they have. This is a great offer and I'm really excited to partner with this company. So I hope you take advantage of it. That's insidetracker.com slash strengthrunning and use code strengthrunning to save 25% off on any test. Now at the same time that you're building mileage, you're building your long run and you're doing this over about an eight week period, we also wanna be doing something else. We also wanna be introducing easy speed into our training. Now, what do I mean by easy speed? Well, let's differentiate between running hard and running fast. We can run fast without that running being super challenging. And I love this concept because it introduces fast to running as something that's fun, as something that's playful, something that you can do more frequently than just once or twice a week. So I love to see runners doing regular strides two or three days a week, but 100 meter accelerations where you build to about 95% of your max speed and then you coast to a stop. They're fun, they're sort of like drills that you would do after an easy run. Other easy speed types of workouts include fartleks. You can simply run series of 30 seconds, a minute, maybe a minute and a half at a slightly faster effort during your otherwise easy runs. You can take more substantial recovery. You don't even have to be running very fast during these shorter segments. All we wanna do is touch speed. We wanna play with speed. We want to experience speed without it being very challenging. We don't wanna be going into oxygen debt. We certainly don't need to be focusing on VO2 max type of workouts. As long as we are touching speed, maybe two or three times a week during this eight week mileage and long run build process, then we're not gonna get too far away from running fast while at the same time really prioritizing the aerobic and endurance benefits of doing all that extra running. All right, our next strategy for making you into a faster version of yourself is after that eight weeks of doing some easy speed, of gradually increasing your mileage and long run, while at the same time, by the way, continuing that strength work to further guard your body against injuries. After that eight weeks, the next thing we wanna do is spend about four to eight weeks doing hard workouts. Now you're actually ready for more challenging workouts. And so once we have gotten strong, once we have built our endurance, once we have played with speed enough so that it's not a novel stress to our body, now we're ready to really take these workouts to the next level, to make them more race specific, to make them more challenging, to start actually doing some more VO2 max oriented work. And you can do this for about four to eight weeks. After about eight weeks, you really do start to burn out. You can't run that intensely for more than about two months or so. And so this strategy has you building your foundation first, not just a foundation of endurance, not just a foundation of strength, but a foundation of strength and endurance with enough speed so that you can then transition to those harder workouts and you're gonna get more out of them and your injury risk is gonna be a lot lower. That final phase where you are doing four to eight weeks of hard workouts, that's where you can also start building in races. And what you're doing is you're now capitalizing on all of the new, better fitness that you've built over the prior 12 weeks. And this approach is really gonna help you prioritize your fitness in the ways that matter at the right times during the training cycle. Now remember, this entire approach rests upon doing more than you have previously done in the past. So after all, it does start with strength training. If you wanna be able to do more, if you wanna increase your workload, the volume and overall intensity of your running, we first need to get strong so that our body is better equipped to handle that extra stress. So it all starts with the strength training and then we do the easy running to build your endurance. Then we layer on the hard, faster workouts to capitalize on that new fitness. 
and you'll be running a lot faster.